You shifted radically from physics researcher to history author. How do you feel that your background helps you write? Oh, I, I think it was a question of mindset in as much as if you're doing physics or engineering research and development, you have to um, only work with proven facts. So that was the first thing that struck me that it was no good relying on hearsay and rumor as to what Grangetown, for example, had been like, because the memories of people only went back to the perhaps, if we're lucky, early uh, 20th century. So I unearthed quite a number of um, other previously unknown documents in the Glamorgan archives uh, that spoke of the, uh, well, almost the war between the Marcus of Butte and the Earl of Plymouth in constructing Grangetown and other areas of Cardiff uh, when the boom time of the docks came along. Um, so I think it's a question of rigor, first of all, but also, and I would say this applies to all history books, that they need to be made into something of a narrative. Uh, there's nothing more boring than giving a date and say, well, this happened at those date and something else happened in the next decade or whatever. That's just a list of things that happened. I think you have to make it into a narrative, a story uh, through which you accompany the reader through the period you're, you're reporting on. You have to have that narrative and also ask questions on behalf of the reader. You know, what was this or that a success? Why did they do this? How did they do that? It's not enough, I think, just to report on facts, but you have to report on the lead up to facts uh, and answer those questions of how, why, what, when. Uh, answering just when is boring. <laughs>